Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing something that I never thought I would ever do. And that is revisiting my first ever digital artwork. So, let me get a little bit closer. In 2005, this little story time here, in 2005 I got my first graphic tablet. I was just starting out at art school in Stuttgart and uh, nobody at art school had a graphic tablet. So I was looking online and what I saw is I saw some concept art of the Star Wars new trilogy at that time. And I was wondering how the heck did they do that, right? Um, and what I quickly found out through some forums was that basically they were working digitally with graphic tablets. Um, so at that point, graphic tablets had been around for at least five years. I think much more than that, but for painting, let's say around the end of the 90s, right? Uh, and I myself had Photoshop until the, yeah, the late 90s. I already had Photoshop. I think it was Photoshop 7. So um, fast forward 2005, I started at university. Finally made the decision to put 500 euros down for an Intuos 3. You can look that up in case you don't know how that looks. And um, right, started drawing, painting <laughs> with the Intuos 3. And the Intuos 3 at that time, it came with Coral Painter. Now, uh, Coral Painter, much like Photoshop, at the same time, it had some features that were the same. It had layer structures, had all of that, but a lot of the stuff that you use for editing in Photoshop, Coral Painter did not have. You could not, uh, I think, at, at that time, have a tone um, level controls, uh, stuff like that, uh, no filters. It was purely... Um, digital painting and um, yeah so it was trying to emulate emulate the analog media basically so what I did was I started to try out this trial version of Coral Painter and so my first two three four pieces that I did were Coral Painter files so the other day I came across a folder on my uh, desktop here in the office and um, and I found that little folder that had some of these earliest artwork in them so what I want to do today is revisit that file with you guys and then get it over in Photoshop analyze it a little bit show you everything I did wrong in this um, artwork, which is basically everything, and then remake the whole thing with a modern perspective and an entire new skill level, basically. So guys, first of all, because you might say to yourself, well, that's a cute story, but how do I know that he's telling the truth, right? So yeah, uh, as I said before, this, this video idea came to me because I came across this folder. As you can see here, this uh, file structure, everything is in German. That's because I'm German. We're in Germany and you can, of course, tell from my first sentence that I ever spoke to you that I have an insane accent and that there is no way that I'm a native speaker. Okay, so uh, got that out of the way. So the file, you can always see it in the background because I had to download a trial version of Coral Painter in order to be able to open this file. So as you can see, the last time this file ever got opened and saved was in the 18th of January in 2006. Um, and this, I think, is accurate. The piece got done before that in 2005. And then, as you oftentimes do, you open it later and then, of course, you might hit save once in a while. So that is the last save I have. But you can clearly see that this is no bullshit story. This uh, file got done 
um, basically, um, yeah, some 19 years ago. All right, so um, this is the file. This is how it looks. Um, and um, it's just enough time passed, <laughs> let me tell you this, that I'm no longer embarrassed by this. Okay, so what is uh, actually amazing is a um, few things. All right, let's, let's go over this. Um, first of all, this thing is way too bright and the colors are pretty much off. It's not what I remember at all. And the reason for that is that 20 years ago, we did not have the monitors that we have today. So I was on a CRT monitor, a Samsung monitor, if I remember correctly. If I find an image, I will put it on screen briefly, but uh, I'm not too confident in that. So little tiny 19 inch uh, CRT monitor and then I think stuff looked more vibrant on there and of course nobody knew about color profiles anything like that so um, this is not what I remember but we'll tune that in Photoshop in a second so amazingly this file is still intact and it has a layer structure that I actually took the time to name all the layers and I remember having many more layers than these I think I had around 50 layers and already that was like half a year later. I That's probably why the save date is January uh, 2006. Uh, I reopened this and I maybe combined and cleaned up the layer structure. So unfortunately the original layer structure is lost, but it would have been a mess. I can tell you that for a fact. So you can see here what I did. Um, and... Um, so I did have a sense of logical order of things. And that is because before I ever did this, I was pretty okay at analog painting and drawing, uh, which I already had done um, since the mid nineties. So quickly going through these layers, if they make sense at all. Yeah, I'm sure I'm doing a lot of things. The logic is here at every piece and even the shadow and the light part of the same structure has a different layer, which uh, you should never do, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> and then what happens here is, yeah, okay, the water covers the cliff. Then there's, yeah, some dirt. And even back then I named everything in English because it was obvious that if you got online in the mid 2000s or early 2000s, everything all the information uh, was in English. There was no, almost no localization of any kind, no content creation uh, of uh, yeah people of your own language. Um, um, if you're not uh, an English, uh, um, from an English speaking country, right? So uh, there's a tree and then there is a tree, one, two, three. And what is this? as yeah, a little all of that stuff uh, way too much blending way too much fog way too much um, division in the foreground and then for some reason I thought it would be a good idea to put that stuff on the same layer which is clearly bullshit <laughs> So anyways, guys, this is a trial version. I'm not going to do any work in um, Coral Painter. And therefore, uh, of course, I prepared this in Photoshop. And immediately what you can see is, and that is very interesting, is that the colors appear different in Photoshop. And that is because of the export options. You have to specify color profiles and when you import them. So this looks much more like I remember it. It looks more vibrant. Uh, and of course, it's still an untacked RGB color profile, but uh, we have to change this right now uh, before we even start doing anything on here. So um, just converting to sRGB, right, to make sure that this is not an issue. Next thing, I have to check for pixel size. So this is the original pixel size of the, of the project, and already you can see it borders on 12 megapixels 
which was it existed back then was digital cameras with 12 megapixels uh, such as your Canons and Nikons uh, so yeah I had a an idea that you should have a higher resolution and your monitor supports for printing etc right so but of course nowadays this is much too little of a resolution so we're going to bump it up substantially so let's do uh, six by four thousand no that's actually could work pretty well we'll now of course keep the layer structure that's why it takes a while so um, a little story in the meanwhile is back then when you were working on a file you had your 2000 like uh, 256 um, megabytes of ram or something like that you would hit an effect or a process and there would be a photoshop pop-up that would straight out tell you you don't have enough memory to perform this um, operation right so you just couldn't do it your file had too uh, large of a resolution and you would hit something like motion blur it would just say no uh -uh, this is not <laughs> happening so yeah uh, different times for sure anyways guys um we have it under control so first thing i need to do is mind my own tip and just create a backup that we can compare it to later so this will be the image and now i can quickly maybe let's do even a little contrast optimization but you can see you can't do too much of a contrast optimization because it's very bright tones here that will break and then there is well actually you can improve darkness i i, I guess so we'd have to do something like this to make it a little bit better but yeah that's just see this perfect example of uh, if you have bad color composition and if you have uh, nonsensical lighting like this dark cloud is way too dark and way too much in front so uh, whatever I do everything comes up in a way that is just unfortunate right so let's keep this layer just as a reminder how stuff looked like. Let's see if I can improve that a little bit with the tones. That's probably what you would have wanted. And then bring the mids a little bit. But then again, everything gets pretty fa pretty dark pretty fast. And uh, it has um, that grayish tone to it. right? So let's go over what I did wrong well let's actually go over what i did right which is the layer structure basically is not too bad and uh yeah we need to combine some of those so there's this background and then there's another background and they're basically not that different so you would combine this but it's fairly this is clearly overdone um, <laughs> i'm not going to bother to change that right so um yeah it's a it's a trip for sure so um questionable order but like mainly a correct order because it goes from back to front in a way that is makes some sense right this is before everything else and then this is on before that because it overlaps it so yeah that stuff is is all right so contrast wise color wise this is terrible right uh, there's no yeah beating around this so um way too bright of tones everywhere basically there's no grounding to these tones there's uh, artificial studio vibe to this where there is just one color of the ground that and then it just goes into a completely different color which it makes no sense it has nothing to do with it's like you put a plastic on top of a different colored plastic that's how it looks like right and then your tree is even uh, a third kind of a plastic <laughs> the thing that looks um the most uh coherent here i think are some of the grays and the grains 
um, some of that shadow in the tree could make sense but everything else is just much too bright and uh, the contrast estimation on everything is just wrong see how you have a difference between light and shadow here which is way too little uh, way too uh, little to have any impact at all right so you would have it dark down here and you would have it dark and contrasty in front so of course the thing i knew back then even was that you have an atmospheric perspective so that's why this in the in the back you, you can get away with this nowadays even i would say that's that's fine um but yeah everything in front and in the middle um it's rough then i also did the mistake of uh, painting softly here right so you can see that a lot of the de these details are soft in nature and that's not a very good look and that's because because also one i didn't know any better i didn't even know what brushes to use and i cannot recreate that in my mind whatsoever i have zero recollection of that so but painter has their own brushes of course and they work in a really different way sometimes than they do in photoshop um, so it is very confusing in the beginning to wrap your head around all of these um, brushes what to use now i knew photoshop before so um, to my advantage i knew what layers were i knew how to structure layers i knew what blending modes were i did um, even before i ever started digital painting i did some stuff in photoshop just for fun right i did some logo designs and i i would scan my own images and just uh, use the sliders to improve them uh, do little things with friends just uh, fun projects right so i had an idea of how to use photoshop so what i want to do now is basically now that you saw me at my weakest <laughs> because <clears throat> to be frank with you um, when this was done and I did another one, did another one, and they were all like this, they were all pretty terrible. And I was like, huh, am I ever going to be able to do this? Because my analog work at that point was much better than this, right? So um, I was I was kind of frustrated because I'm, I, I'll kid you not, I, I, this took me at least 25 hours to do this, at least. And it took days it was like two weeks and uh, i was trying to learn everything uh in this one process which obviously did not work right so yeah um now what i want to do i want to quickly restructure this see if there's anything i can save from this at all and then just go berserk on all of this okay so now first thing is i need to get rid of these right And I will only keep the um, what I like at all from this. But first, I need to uh, establish some kind of a structure, right? There is some blending over the you see that I need to find that stuff uh, actually I don't absolutely have to but I think it would help there is going to be a midground and only one midground
Oh yeah, that's right. See? Wow, that helped. <laughs> what did I do? Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah, this is... And that's also, that's all a one tree. I'm not going to document every step here because this would just be ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, we'll see where we end up. And there is a big chance that, um, not a big chance, it, it will be like that. Uh, I will, uh, as soon as we uh, analyze this some more, I will do some painting uh, in a time lapse because I don't want to bother you. Uh, watching this three hours or something that would in this case I think uh, it's more of a flashy thing to watch and that you can enjoy it better when it's uh, a little bit faster than usual tree so now you can see it doesn't integrate anymore probably thinking to yourself why do you make it so dark and the answer that is 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 not that dark <laughs> you just you just um, were looking too long at the the other image that was way too bright so um, you just forget what is normal if you and that's the problem with a lot of this when you're in the process and everything is so bright and you get used to it and then um, you stop seeing that it's not a good idea What is this? All right. So tonally also, of course, this needs a lot of fixing, but I don't want to do too much here because uh, for sure, um, for sure, I will p just paint over this um, like um, very aggressively right there will not be much left of this for sure and then we need some of the i think that's blue yeah it is blue why is it so blue <laughs> uh, it could be more towards the cyan i guess so this combined so slowly we're getting rid of all of those unnecessary layers that are also confusing uh, because yeah dividing an object into like yeah these are the leaves in the light and these um, this layer is the leaves in the shadow so that's don't do that don't do that um yeah so water some contrast also um have some color why don't you <laughs> i was very bad at color back then so what i would do is i would just um have everything be very careful with the color hence everything was very light and very gray uh, i had this problem for at least the first two three years that everything looked too grayish that i did digitally This is just the terrible layer. Overall, this goes completely out the window. 
Now, where are these plants? Yeah, well. And then we might want a different color on those. A little bit of a blue, maybe. Now, we have the foreground and we have some rocks. Uh, what I like about this, maybe some of the only things I like about this at all, are these tiles, these huge rock tiles that suggest a kind of an artificial structure that was there before and that is broken and old. And I think that would be a nice theme to go for in the remake is you have some more structures, maybe some columns of a lost society, um, uh, old ancient city ruins coming out here and there from the environment. So that would be something cool. Uh, but I don't think I, 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 I thought conceptually like that when I first did uh, the artwork. So let's just bring this. To certain contrast so that I can start yeah this is there's no way see this is too dark in comparison to what is baked in on the same layer which is much too bright you cannot save that so this will go down and then um, yeah there's nothing you can do about that All right, so yeah, we can of course influence the the color, make that ground less yellow, which that already might help a lot, and I make it also that tone not darker actually, yeah, darker, but not not less saturated. So you see, you can bring that up just a little bit. Um, Oh yeah, it's really hard because it lacks so much vibrancy. All right, this now see how it does not integrate anymore. And guys, what I don't want to do is I don't want to change the canvas size, and I and I don't want to change everything maybe let's keep the water line because uh, we need uh, some point of a comparison so that it's still fun to compare it to, to what it was before in the end right uh, if I just do an entire new artwork then just letting you know I'll not do that I'll just try my best to keep the idea Actually, have this a little bit brighter is pretty cool because it looks like it's illuminated back there. So maybe um, I'll go with that. But it's still the case though. <laughs> and you need also, yeah, you need you need some. Some weight to those tones, right? the yellow I don't know what I was thinking the way to yellow everything and also too saturated now and okay, we can make that yeah that doesn't work okay so we hit a limit here um, guy oh yeah oh look at this mistake transparent water why because guess what water is transparent <laughs> don't don't do that don't ever do that uh, everything should be a full um, physical body right of tones also this is this 
is also transparent this layers look at this and you definitely don't want to do that so transparency over here over here over here what you can do to mitigate this a little bit is duplicate the layer and that will of course double the opacity of the layer but also it will of course get a lot darker doing that so in this case this is actually not a good not a bad thing because uh, everything too flimsy it covers it up uh, back there it's actually an improvement so uh, i will keep this um and then back here not so transparent duplicate the water get rid of that transparency you can do this over and over again see and at one point uh, it's just too much um, ad additional uh, information and it will just um, be fixed so now the sky needs a color because yeah of, of course it could be really bright but i need a little bit more of a color tone to work with here so what what we need is a set we need to improve saturation but not of the yellow i don't like the yellow this is like the uh the mistake that i made probably to think oh yeah the sun shines so therefore there is yellow in the sky and that is just never the case because the only thing that becomes yellow through the sun is surfaces that the sun shines on and not the air uh, or the sky for that matter um, if there's clouds diff different story um, but yeah of course there's uh, times when the entire sky can be yellowish but that's also a different story but not you don't have blues over here and then in the corner you it shines yellow for no reason so don't don't do that now the master and i think those are blues and that's fine but it's way too purple so i'm going to shift it towards cyan like so see that much better and then make it a little bit darker too you still have the atmospheric perspective pretty much intact and now we could of course modify those rocks in the back uh, those uh, mountains excuse me um so give them a little bit more and then sometimes this is uh, cool uh, to have now here a little bit of color come in because the sky is bright but um, what is in front has more contrast but then again it's still subdued by the blue of the atmosphere but then maybe some, sometimes this shines uh, much more saturated and that um, that is actually something that happens uh, and you can you can um, see that on some photographs going on so using this here and then the second layer of uh, I'm not too convinced to keep them at all actually to be honest um, but if I was to keep them they would have to be of course also something like that um, darker of course and then yeah maybe something like this right so now we have this <laughs> cloud you could now put this cloud in the back well actually yeah cloud is could not overlap something that is so close because you don't have your cloud so close so there's another uh, mistake of thinking here and uh, now let's fix this for once way too high contrast it would would have to be something like this and then tonally this also it does not make sense tonally so we would have to shift this into that 
dark blue something like this if we ever wanted to keep that at all and now you can see that there's another problem because it just doesn't make sense that there is a higher contrast cloud between a low uh, in uh, behind a lower contrast mountain that is not something that will ever happen uh, in reality if the shadow on this cloud is a certain darkness then the shadow on something like this in front would have to be even darker and there is no way around this so therefore this does not work now let's see if we can change this even more but yeah there's limitations to that um, and also this is really not vignetting with the cloud like that it's it's not and it's not a good cloud so <laughs> best solution to this problem is that for now right so we came out here on the other side of what was confusing lighting scenario and everything well, let's see there's actually something missing oh yeah oh this is where all the bright stuff is see all of this silicon plastic lighting that is way too bright for any a tree uh, any uh, natural structure is baked in here might be okay here but i don't even like that uh, on the on the water but definitely this is all complete nonsense so okay let's leave some on the water for now this needs to go and all of this needs to go uh, see how much better that looks immediately so in this case less is much more which also uh, a lot of people starting out don't realize this and then there's this first of all this has no business being on the same layer with this in the front here so this gets cut and this gets uh, down to the water layer so now uh, we can even combine this if we want to it doesn't matter um then that water could have some final tuning could we do this green actually that would be cool i think let's see do it again That's too green. Greenish. Well. Mm. Still has transparencies going on over here. And also now it's lacking contrast. yeah much more like that and then we can eliminate more of the transparency but yeah that's i think that's for now that is the end of it um maybe even tone this down to look now at the small version because there's still a lot of tones wrong in here so yeah and now lastly this is not a blend this is just a silhouette but the names uh, let's not care about the names so first of all this needs some higher contrast
And then again, those yellows, man. See, you can almost bring this onto a certain level, but it will not matter. So now we lost stuff over here, of course. This we could say, yeah, it's now it's too aggressively black. So elevate these blacks just a tiny bit. The same on here. elevate the blacks but then I need to counter this in the middle like so now this becomes one layer and um, yeah this can actually stay <laughs> see how this uh, the oversight flowers I don't know if we have these flowers at all be honest with you so this is something we can work with I guess so now we need a new game plan and this new game plan i will very quickly sketch it uh, on here just so you can understand how i think about this before i go wild on this so um this uh, this is good this is like a sub horizon and then maybe behind there is uh, a real uh, more of a horizon that is you cannot see it so this gets more diffused and this is the actual horizon and then from there we actually don't need to see this everywhere that's fine so this is good I like this gap but then what happens is we need this I think to appear much flatter and silhouette better have some trees over here uh, this I don't know if this stays but the way this overlaps is bad so this needs to be cut somewhere I like these I already said that before I like these and this and that's the whole civilization aspect of it We'll put more of these, put more of these over here maybe. And then maybe we have um, a column somewhere. Would be nice to have a column here. And um, these background mountains are a little bit too aggressive. This is too aggressive. This is not good. This is much better. This is okay. This is okay. But not this. So this this is okay. These I'll kill. In a way, let's see, can actually get flatter, flatter. And then just that there is too much shape going on here. I don't like that. Um so this tree it's not integrated really. So that needs to change. This tree needs to move I will keep the tree like so it's kind of okay but down here this the, the tree needs to integrate into the ground much better than that uh, also this just uh, rock starting like a border is a bad idea so what we need here is we need more more and more rocks and more stuff over here and then this needs to be um, if this was a structure before, it needs to be a lot different. And this structure up here is not believable. I will not have this at all. And so what happens is this will go up. This will go up here and then it will... Maybe there will be only trees to silhouette this come down here and then be over here with the trees and then this doubling doubling of shapes 
uh, behind like the same cliffs the same thing I don't like that at all so this needs to change dramatically um, maybe even like so and then this needs to be much more shallow and then maybe something like this you can barely see that there is something there is a river bank or something and on this side it's the same thing I need I think it needs to come in here do something and then yeah maybe that could be the case and then this cliff double cliff situation like they form almost um, something that could also be uh, a structure right um, that is maybe a remainder of old but this this double peak I said it before I don't like it so this needs to go and then there is a new much more um, less intrusive way of uh, making these shapes right so that's okay that is okay but there needs to be something here that makes sense um, ground doesn't need to be so even those stairs let's keep them just for the sake of it change in orientation and then yeah that's fine you can silhouette stuff like this and then over here silhouette again that is all fine again maybe there's a column here and then works a little bit like so it could be the case and this as for this uh, we'll have to see this this just I like that I will keep that this is good so this I'll keep and then this needs to change in a way that I'm not sure maybe uh, maybe that's good to have some overlap and then here that is fine again so that can happen and then I need of course a uh, character maybe one two protagonists maybe only one and of course the person then will put him her I, I'm not sure yet here looking eye level with the horizon would be good yeah something like this and then maybe there is stuff coming out of the water and more rocks of course something like that so that is the game plan guys for now um, everything else I'll make it up on the fly and we'll see where we end up so before I start little reminder <laughs> it looked like this before <laughs> and I'm very sure that we all forgot so now you see the first problem with this even without painting any stroke the first problem is just evaluation is was completely wrong of uh, tonally so it's very hard to make something from this right So now guys what I will do is I will get myself off camera for um, for a while um, paint this to a certain stage and then we'll talk again so see you later all right guys so a little voiceover for you here so you don't feel so lonely first we're establishing the foundation basically uh, that means 
I'm cutting away everything that I want to change and that I decided already from the uh, overlay drawing uh, from the red lines this is my thought process and then I try to go there is basically as quickly as possible and as always I like to block out the shapes with the lasso tool first especially if you have a drawing underneath you already know what to do so that is why I like the the whole planning out with a little drawing because then you can really optimize speed and uh, be efficient I think so the thing is I want to keep the main composition so that you have a real comparison later it would not be great if I was just to erase half of the image and then later it would be no point in comparing the before and after I think so now what I was talking about earlier now we're doing that we're basically correcting colors after the shapes are there the colors need to come uh, you have to have the feeling that all the tones make sense so then I basically proceed to just paint in whatever comes to mind uh, and this is a little bit of an erratic process because when I studied the image before with you guys uh, I was getting a lot of ideas so sometimes I'm jumping around because I, I want to make sure that I don't forget what I was uh, thinking about especially if you think that you have a good idea you want to uh, make sure that it makes it into the final piece So a lot of this remaking of the shapes um, is a little bit more tedious when you want to, like with the trees, keep some of the old shape because the old shape is in a completely different style. In this case, um, that makes it kind of uh, less intuitive to just remake it. Uh, if you were to delete it, I think it would be much faster. So now I feel that a lot of the thoughts, the contrast, needs to really come up. Especially on these rocks and like the illuminated areas, just like in front. And then of course everything needs to be less uh, clean and a little bit more chaotic. Like, as if there were like rocks laying around and um, yeah, everything was uh, too behaved, you could say. See, so also, from time to time, I just uh, erase underlying old stuff once I have replaced it. So, yeah, layer structure, as you can see, remains fairly simple. It's not, uh, I, as long as you're in the rough, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just make sure that you make uh, the overall right decision. And then I'm um, trying to fix the color of the tree. Make it less um, plasticky. Also, the ground uh, was much too artificial looking before. So now it's the same process for the tree where I want to keep the tree because I think that uh, the idea and basic shape placement it was all right and also it will I realized that it will make for a nice comparison later so then there's uh, a little bit of a mix of uh, lasso tool blocking in new shapes 
the sharp leaves which were not there before and then also painting over with a, just a regular brush. Getting some more details in. So it really sells the whole um, object better. All right, guys, we are one hour in, pretty much exactly one hour. Uh, I'm not sure how fast the time lapse is, but um, yeah, I think it makes sense um, for you to see it a little bit faster. That way I'm twice as fast because I can concentrate on what I'm doing better. And then, um, yeah, we can talk about it a little still. So. A um, little update, um, I did a lot of layer work here um, and so far I didn't do anything insane which is why I kept the layer structure pretty much intact. Uh, I realized that I um, it takes some time to work with the old stuff here in the tree for example to overhaul this tree without just I think redoing it straight just deleting redoing would be much faster but um, that's kind of not the point here we want to remake the original um, in a faithful manner I believe that would be good um, my uh, former self would have uh, enjoyed that for sure <laughs> so anyways uh, you can see that uh, this tonally works now a lot better it's a lot more ground that we can quickly compare it to what it was before it was like this um, if you remember at all right so now it's like you you take a veil from that and everything becomes much more clear and makes much more sense tonally so also you will see that I stick to the plan pretty much I put the column here um, all of that have a little um, what would you call it gate like structure here uh, for the water uh, that makes sense um, this I followed pretty much I'm not too sure about the staircase yet maybe there will be a, a platform or something like that because yeah we'll see we'll see um, so far much of the water has been improved and um, then I spend a substantial amount of time on this uh, area over here. Um, what I haven't touched yet uh, is this one. And this is because um, that I think is uh, fairly uh, easy to tackle. It's mostly uh, the point of that layer is mostly to silhouette and to make to give the impression that you're looking through the on the growth uh, onto the scene, right? Also, uh, a character has not yet appeared. I still plan on doing that, but we'll see about that later. And then um, another a mental note I took was that I need to do something better, uh, more a little bit more exciting with the sky here. I think that would be good. And also, um, what it comes down to is that this will be side lit. Hence, I did all of this. So. Uh, uh, on the tree and on the column here you will see that and now it makes uh, most sense if actually um, that lighting will come from um, this side over here uh, it hits all of these objects and it puts that area into the shadow uh, will also put of course yeah we have to see if it comes from more from the back or more from the front but I'm I think uh, I'm thinking more uh, slightly from the back there so that would mean that um, yeah it's uh, coming from the horizon 
maybe this way which would make this lighting um, possible I guess also that would mean that whatever character it would have to have a shadow like so that would be pretty cool and then um, yeah this stuff is mostly in the shadow already with uh, some lighting here some some rim lighting it's just because of the angle maybe can barely make it on for that light so in that case um, this would have to be a little bit more steep right so then lighting maybe like so that would make this possible and uh, that would actually make the shadow slightly shorter yeah so I guess that will work and then over here this will influence the scene and other than that pretty much yeah not so much because this is all passively lit area here so that will work the same doesn't matter and then when I did this ground I already had this thought in my head uh, of uh, having this illuminated area over here and having the rest here in the shadow so that's where this um, stems from pretty much because I don't want to have the Sun in the frame that would make the lighting really aggressive and also that would make everything like this not really possible to be lit like that so yeah that's um, where I'm at currently so uh, I hope you're still watching and enjoying this um, I'll do some more and uh, talk to you later So next thing is that um, the character sheet uh, come it was something that I um, yeah I wanted to make a cut on the first hour just give you an impression of how that timing works and now yeah I just have like a wanderer standing there basically I remember that um, back in the day when I first did this I wanted to have somebody there or something else but then I was so frustrated at the end and I was so it was su such a tedious process that I uh, could not bring myself to to draw a character in there and also I thought that for sure it would uh, not be great and then I just kept the landscape by itself so that's how that happened So for once there is no sci-fi elements in this one. I just have a um, basic character could be like any could even be a retro timeline in terms of narrative. So basically I um the taller uh, the more space the character needs on the canvas the more I struggle with it because I'm not an, uh, I'm not painting people regularly I just put them in uh, my environments for reference and for storytelling basically so on this uh, in this size I feel comfortable if, if it was like a, a whole character study then yeah I would struggle Now filling some of the gaps that I didn't arrive at in the first hour. And at the same time fixing, uh, introducing new shades and new variations of tones, which uh, is always good. Make it more natural and more organic. Because my style overall, it is a pretty graphic style. So I like the hard shapes and I like the the uh, tone separation a lot and then you need your colors to be on point for that so else it will just look very uh, artificial so then the idea here is that you can see through the water surface where there is shadow and see something uh, basically underneath which I didn't know how this would work out because I was not using any reference for this image I wanted to just make it 
the same way I did back in the day, just from imagination. So sometimes that stuff works out. And of course, nowadays I've seen a lot more, I've painted a lot more, so I know how things look much better than I did back then. breaking up those rocks and uh, making sure that they're not too clean because that was uh, what the old image uh, suffered a lot, uh, everything being too clean. So already I like this water, uh, the look of it, uh, but I know that later we need some heavy reflection and maybe some shadowing on, on the surface. not as satisfied yet with the character's pose. I think I changed the leg a little bit and the backpack. In this case, the character doesn't need to do much, just needs to be there and complement the scene. And then now is the first time that really that shadow manifests, the one I planned out in the, uh, in the overlay drawing. So this now it's kind of because the plan is that there is direct sunlight and then on the left side is less direct sunlight and more in the shadow and more indirect lighting. So then there's still the old foreground and I'm replacing it now with um, yeah harder shapes and um, more of distinct plants so this is it might be something very unusual to you if you did not practice a lot with the lasso tool the idea that i paint a entire layer just like a cliche and then fill it out but if you get used to this you can really kind of see into the future how this will look and then <laughs> you just make it appear and then what i'm doing there is I, i'm still having that selection intact it's just not visible and then i'm filling out the shapes with a light color and a dark color and once in a while i need to remind myself what, what, what the plan was in the in the old one and i'm using that vegetation on the left um, the bottom corner to just um crop the scene basically this this is uh, should be dark later on So I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm trying to keep really the idea, even down to the type of plants uh, that I was using all those years ago, because I want there to be a, a nice comparison going on later. And that's, I think that's uh, what makes it, this uh, whole project exciting. Um, as I said before, if you would just do away with everything and then it would just be a new picture. So of course, uh, there is compromises here and uh, I have to keep the composition. But then in the background, we change quite some stuff. Even though I kept the, uh, the way that the mountain or the mountain sides are split into kind of forming that gate, I just um, made that idea um, more distinct basically. And now the sky, I was not happy with the sky the entire time. It needs a little bit more color. And also I changed the lighting because now you can see from the shadow that the light is really coming from the left side much more. And having that light in the other corner, it will silhouette the tree even better. So then what you have is you have light entering from the upper left corner and then basically shining onto the lower right corner and exiting the scene on the lower right yeah a little bit the illusion of detail there in the background going on which i think you need because you're looking through that gate and um, we need there to be something that you can distinguish from from the rest so that you feel that is something worth looking at and that of the like the world is going on beyond that opening right uh, 
and then of course that whole thing needs to make sense with the sky and now a little bit of the shading in between gives you like the impression of uh, rock formations and uh, all of that yeah do that sometimes playing around with a slider see if that sky the way I painted it could integrate even more than it did already most of the time you end up if you have a good eye then you end up using uh, plus minus two three percent of what you were painting anyways but uh, yeah once in a while you get surprised so then this uh, little tree has to come And it's the same story again here. Uh, I was keeping too much of it. So at one point, it would just, uh, yeah, get enough and just want to do away with the old stuff because uh, these soft brush strokes that I had in there, there's really no solution to them. They will just look blurry and uh, not make uh, for a great uh, shape. On the left side, there's still some in there on the like on the same mid ground, and then of course this is now more exposed to the lighting um, according to my plan. So there needs to be that lighter um, green tone. And now this is the old stuff I was talking about a second ago. And what you want is that you can distinguish those bushes and trees from like the foreground in terms of contrast. Also keeping again as much of the old composition as makes sense and positioning of those objects so basically if this uh, if this uh, old piece had a overall terrible idea there would be no point in doing this but it was not so much the idea that was lacking but it was just um, the skill to bring it to the canvas to to really um, craft it in a way that makes sense because uh, I had um, experience with composition and painting before so um, I was seeing a nice scene in my head I just could not paint it digitally that's what what, what happened there so then some more details on that tree Where is the most contrast? You need a strong silhouette because that will be really apparent then that, uh, yeah, people will look where there is a lot going on and a lot of contrast. Now, yeah, more bushes, trees to just, there was a kind of a separation between that, um, those background layers which that I wanted to break up that is, so that it's not as harsh because uh, else you feel like it's just a diorama of flat stuff so now what we're doing is um, we're um, bringing that gate structure uh, a little bit more detail and then makes it more interesting so that you can linger on it for uh, a few more seconds it will be more interesting like if there was the idea is that there was a bridge once and then it collapsed or something like that then of course um, some kind of shadow um, manifesting on the water surface 
and uh, you can be quite loose with that because you you never know in reality how distant things are and then how much of it is like uh, overblown by reflections and how much shadow you can actually see on the water surface this is like varies uh, uh, quite a bit well of course you need sun to hit the objects as you can see here with those uh, bushes because else what you will give the impression of a uh, of a cloudy sky and no direct sunlight so we want this to be like a pretty nice day um, yeah there's clouds and the sky is not all like deep blue clear uh, so it's little foggy you would say a little humid maybe even uh, so that in that case it makes sense that you like you have this uh, whitening out of um, the um, uh, background and then of course now the details come on that layer too where you can see that light actually affects it and it's not just a flat plane Yeah, some composition changes with this foreground here because I wanted there to be an opening. Now this little experiment with uh, custom shape. I have a very small library of custom shapes. So plants like this, which I drew uh, once and then they're very complicated and I like them. I sometimes just save them as custom shapes so that I can basically pull it out if I need something similar and then what you will see is that I actually modify it uh, according to light source and then I will cut away from the object uh, to make it fit that scene uh, sometimes I only use half the shape or one third of the shape so that's also a nice technique uh, it makes you faster by reusing stuff that you already painted that was really complicated and I think a silhouette is the perfect example of that because the silhouette it carries no lighting therefore you can light it by just painting on it uh, in whatever way you want now over here we need some more dark tones to sell the contrast because uh, those parts which are not illuminated they are they will carry really dark tones um, than being in the foreground and having the most contrast in the entire scene and we make just more details on everything which also you will see that I'm hopping around even with the details because I want I don't want to obsess over one part too long and that's why you will not see me linger or zoom in extremely to anything here because you will lose focus and then all of a sudden you will have intense detail on like one little window of the entire thing and then the other stuff will lack that same detail and therefore it will uh, not integrate anymore So this was way too bright over there because um, like I said before um, the plan is that it's more in the shadow on the left side and then kind of um, vignetted out and then of course those um, parts of the structure stone tablets and whatever they um, have to have the same level of detail and then I give them some shapes some round shapes and some some corners that just uh, express that there was like uh, uh, carvings and stuff that is not just plain rock but it really was part of a structure and maybe of a building um, something like that yeah originally I was thinking like uh, giving way more structures here but then again as I said before, uh, it will not make it really comparable anymore because then you would cover up so much of 
the original idea uh, that yeah it will slowly become an uh, entirely different image so yeah I made a very radical decision there with those trees all of a sudden I felt like yeah uh, they need to be different and then I uh, wanted to see them illuminated and yeah that turned out pretty okay so that you have really um, light hitting that because once in a while you will just come across something that really bothers you and then you feel like you need to fix it immediately so now what we're doing is we need a real sun reflection so where there is no shadow so I'm preparing reflections on the right side of that water surface while leaving the left side mostly in the shadow so you will see what happens in a second there uh, on a color dodge layer that is uh, we get some insane reflectiveness uh, and that makes this surface really pop basically all of a sudden now there is a, a difference between where the sun hits and uh, where there is passive shadows uh, like from the tree on the left and from the from that hill and then in between you sprinkle just little flashes of ripples on the water but you must yeah you should be careful a little bit with that not overdo it and also I'm using a mix here of very bright um, yellow in the beginning and also blending in uh, more blues from the sky so that you feel like there is a vibrancy to the water surface now because that those ripples become more bright that automatically makes like the see-through effect uh, on those um, structures on the left that are under the water supposed to be under the water surface it makes it work better and now what I'm doing is that was just a very spontaneous idea and that is that um, there is more artificial structure there where the stair stairs lead up towards um, something that is partially underneath the, the dirt uh, and uh, like uh, baked into the ground almost you could say so I was not sure if this will work so um, I, I spent quite <laughs> some extra time on this uh, but yeah pr pretty early on I had the feeling that in my work and that it will make the scene just that little bit more interesting so yeah this, this works um, and you get the what I was going for there is the feeling that underneath this dirt there is there is the structure is just going on uh, towards the right where then the column is and all of that rubble so that that makes even more sense so there's stuff to be discovered let's say and then just more rendering And also the left side is still too bright um, still you don't have this this foreground difference of light and shadow uh, quite enough uh, for my taste yeah, so that's why I'm trying to bring it up here because I feel like like uh, the more exposed stuff is the more the sun will hit it and then you'll have basically on the left we don't know what is there and what casts a shadow or not but it could be the case that uh, some parts there is just more light coming through maybe the trees on the left that we can't even see on the hill and then you have these um, little illuminated areas uh, with just in between like a more soft uh, shadow 
of course where the the character stands and where there's a, a direct uh, sunlight shadow from the character there needs to be illuminated because else it would not make sense to have a shadow there but from the character at all right so now these are like reverse lighting and that that is to say that i'm just making darker what is not illuminated because everything was bright enough already and i'm just leaving uh bright spots in between that give this little uh mystical feeling that sun rays hit through whatever is on the left that we can't see and then just uh, hits the scene i was thrown outside the area there so i just had to fix that for a second and then the, that stuff that i just put on the side for long uh, was bothering me but i mean sometimes it's just like yeah i'll take care of that later and then you realize oh shit it is later and now i need to do it so everything that is not the main attraction sometimes people don't like to render it uh, and uh, yeah i would say that makes sense because it is not a photograph so i also uh, put less effort in what is on the sidelines there and like what is uh, on the on the edge of of the screen because you're not supposed to look there too much but it needs to have some consistency and uh, cannot be just a blob or a blur that is that is not not enough um, you have to maintain like the illusion of detail let's say yeah this was also not not bright enough now because now this kind of the rocks in the middle is kind of a little bit too dull in comparison to the front so i want this really i want people really to like understand where the sun hits and hence like this dirt is now getting brighter and, and so is the rock formation there so that you can really uh, sense the exposure to direct lighting then i like to blur the heart shapes uh, not blur but uh, actually smudge so that way i will keep some of the hard edges and then where there is a fall off i can just smudge it um, and have a nice um, uh, yeah almost like a gradient but yeah just a fall off that is soft so if you're drawing very soft uh, there would be no reason to use much that much but since i'm drawing very hard shapes all the time there is a lot of benefit to it so now i feel that basically all that's left is a little post processing in the end where you you give shadow and light a little bit over everything which you will see later and then also what comes right now which is just a little bit more detail where there is something interesting you want to bring that up a little bit so that people really look at it even uh, more so there was the original idea of that overgrowth which I'm bringing bringing it back from the like original yeah and again another structure that was too dull in that new lighting environment and then uh, one feeling that I did have while doing it for quite some time is that there should be something else like something else like uh, I, I end up using a bird there but it's not it's not the like the cliche swarm of birds um, using uh, want to use like a big um, river bird so that there's more tonal control here in the middle Just creating um, um, that distance between the layers. So now, yeah, that that is that is what is going to be the bird again. Drawing with the lasso because these are hard shapes, and I have drawn quite some birds in my day, so. Um, 
that would be the point where you would pull up the ref just look at what bird you want and then just draw the bird in uh, with a photo ref so yeah you, you can't like uh, know just what everything looks like without even looking at it that is not it's not possible <laughs> so yeah that that is a that is a good example of uh, what would be a ref use in here also of course the people and also architecture of course so now i wanted to take off basically from the water cast a shadow to communicate distance and yeah keep in line with that lighting uh, angle that i constructed for the character and uh, there's also a great show off and then like some splashes in in the water here where like it touches the water maybe hunting for fish anything like that and then the shadow is was i was <laughs> A little bit unhappy in the beginning because yeah uh, it, it was just too deep of a shadow and that happens sometimes where you just make the shadow too deep and you realize that the plane that you're drawing on is just uh, it's pretty far away already and you would not have such a deep shadow so then second bird which is supposed to be illuminated this was just the test there and I was seeing if I can get away with it and if it actually looks cool having an almost completely white illuminated bird a second bird is much more in in the distance and what i do a lot is that i draw these a little bit bigger and then scale them down so i gain some detail and but it was way too big to be all the way back there so now you feel much more the distance that there is and it could be the case that these are the same kind of birds right it just one is like back there in the uh, in the mist illuminated and the other is just uh, yeah in action in front so now you're using like the staircase character bird other bird to go from the foreground enter the scene and then leave the scene in between the rock opening basically that is like the 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 point of view of the character and the way the uh, the way you discover the scene narratively and then there's the way the light hits the scene which is from top left to bottom right basically so you all always have these dynamics going on and they need to play together but you need to just try that out uh, and see um, if it makes sense so the, the only thing that is important here is nothing is off limits it's just that some things they work better than others and then if they work it's good to take a mental note and just learn that oh yeah that is something that works and you can replicate it in another painting so now there's our last uh, touch-ups here where I'm smudging a little bit, breaking some structures and then adding just that very little bit more detail. Bringing up some of the detail and then, yeah, that's the last few modifications basically. And now that there's the last shadow passes, shadow and light pass, little blendings. You can just bring it up just that little bit more before uh, we leave it be. Now we just combine layers in a second once and then optimize contrast and then that is basically it.
yeah now i'm treating this like a, a normal canvas like everything is together so there is a layer on top of everything which can smudge everything and that is to yeah little signature there and we are done guys so here we are with uh, the final image um, took me quite some time <laughs> so it is good that we're doing a time lapse here because that would be like around five hours of painting until this point so there is no way I can do this live while talking I would take me even longer because I will not be able to concentrate and be as fast, of course. So yeah, let's just have a look. Um, the moment of truth, basically. Is, um, so I made uh, two of those um, uh, layers just to compare. So the first one was this, we came from this. Um, I have long forgotten how that looked like <laughs> during that uh, because you get so used to your changes and uh, you need to think within the changes to to really make uh, progress and you have to let this old thing go if you're ever redoing your own art you have to let go of that you can't have everything you had in here because else it will be the same image right so um, what we had second is this state and that was quite apart from the character this was the one hour mark uh, where we established the scene and this is basically is the biggest difference um, from here to here it's really is apparent that we created a whole new foundation uh, and uh, really modified uh, the entire scene so all the details and um, everything else then came afterwards so there was then yeah refining everything creating a water surface and some birds and then we got this right so this is again uh, is a drastic difference of course but that is mo more on the rendering side so of course yeah this is a drastic difference but is it as dramatic as the difference from that to this I don't think so all right so um, this is more um, you need to then understand what um, basically needs to be done to bring up the detail so um, overall that was quite fun it was exhausting a little bit and uh, as you can see I'm not wearing the same shirt it's not the same day so uh, this uh, it didn't didn't work uh, out to be uh, to for me to be able to do that in one sitting of course that's I have to work and <laughs> do other stuff also so I hope you guys appreciate that and um, I hope you like the image and the transformation uh, I think it was worth it. Was it worth 19 years? I don't know. <laughs> you have to decide for yourself. Of course, that is uh, more of like a dramatic title for a video. Because uh, obviously, um, if, you can, uh, if you can improve the skill you and you do it uh, in art school or you do it consistently, you will not need 19 years for this. So that is that is that right um, but oh yeah you also on the other hand you need to be consistent and uh, keep painting in order for uh, to achieve like a real progress and I think that's what this uh, uh, video maybe demonstrates best that uh, it's not about how many years or um, but just overcoming your old self and not get stuck uh, with uh, a process you can reinvent yourself as many times as you want to and you will after coming back after a few years if you are doing work if you are 
if you keep painting you will improve and if you look back on your old stuff it will be a difference for sure so anyways guys i'm gonna leave it at that for today and uh, i'm going to check myself out yeah have a sip of water too sweating in here can you hear the water sparkle <laughs> guys this has been quite the nostalgic trip remaking that 2005 first artwork i ever did on the intus 3 in coral painter man <laughs> what a trip uh, so yeah i hope you like the transformation of that took me quite some time which is why i also forfeit my um, usual upload schedule because there was no way doing this um, in such uh, in half a week or something like that because yeah i work i don't do this full time um, anyways guys um, leave me your comments let's see maybe you do something like this again i have tons of old artwork if you if you like that and also we can maybe possibly also do other formats like criticizing your artwork or um some famous artwork or yeah there is um tons of possibilities but um yeah i will definitely bring back this format in some ways just not weekly this would be too much work so yeah uh, and another time i want to maybe remake one or two other old really old artworks so that is kind of is the beauty about the whole digital painting thing is that uh, every painting is a time capsule and you can just bring it back and there's no degradation no loss of anything and uh, even the file structure like uh, of this remain intact which is uh, i did not expect this so uh, that's why i felt like this is a really cool idea if you dig the video let me know otherwise have a great day i'm gonna go now relax watch an 80s movie or something like that <laughs> see you later